You've heard the expression, time is money. Well, today we're going to talk about the science behind a surprisingly common but not commonly known phenomenon called delay discounting. Stay tuned. I have here a dollar bill. Let me ask you, how much is it worth? Now, while that seems like a one question IQ test, it turns out that the answer may not be so simple. If I were to give you a choice, would you rather have a dollar now or a dollar 10 days from now? Most people and most animals, it turns out, prefer immediate rewards over delayed rewards. This suggests that reward value is affected by time. The longer the reward is delayed, the more the value is reduced or discounted. Psychologists are really great at naming things, so we call this delay discounting. Let's talk about how we observe delay discounting, how it makes a difference in our daily lives, and then I'll walk you through a theory that describes delay discounting. Some of you may be looking for a video to demystify the delay discounting formula, and we'll do that, and don't worry, I'll break it down so that the math isn't scary. <laughs> Delay discounting has been extensively studied with both humans and animals. In both cases, the typical experimental design has participants choose between small rewards now and larger rewards after a delay to see which is preferred. Now for people, this is often dollar amounts over periods of days or weeks, but for animals, this is often the choice between small amounts of food now or a larger amount of food after a delay of a few seconds to minutes. But however you do it, the pattern of results is the same across many species and across many types of rewards. Having to wait for a reward incurs an additional cost. If you think about it, this pops up in many places in our daily lives. People will pay extra for rush shipping on items they ordered online. If you win the lottery, you often have a choice between a structured settlement where the money's paid out over a long period of time in little bits, or receiving a much smaller sum but getting it right away. Usually that's about half the value. Now this means sometimes people give up millions of dollars in lottery winnings because of delayed discounting. I appreciate someone who hits the subscribe button now more than someone who promises to do so at the end of the video. <laughs> Delayed discounting makes sense from an evolutionary perspective. The future is uncertain, and uncertainty bears risks, and risks bear cost. What if I get eaten by, I don't know, a crazed bird by the end of the video? Then by the time you click subscribe, it'll be too late, it'll mean nothing. Do it now, before it's too late. One of the notable findings of this research is that there are individual differences in delay discounting. Some people discount rewards more, meaning they have a stronger preference for immediate rewards. Now, this pattern of behavior is called impulsivity or impulsiveness. On the other hand, those who have a weaker preference for rewards now exhibit more self-control or self-regulation. Now, this explains why some lottery winners might wait for that structured settlement and others will want a smaller amount now. Tests of delay discounting can give you a standardized measure of impulsivity. So why does delay discounting matter? Delay discounting is associated with a variety of behaviors that may have important long-term consequences for physical and mental health. Studies have shown that people who are more impulsive in delay discounting tasks are more likely to engage in drug and alcohol abuse, gambling, and other risky behaviors. Impulsivity measured this way predicts success of drug treatment programs for adolescents, and it can also predict academic performance. These are things that matter. Understanding delayed discounting can help identify individuals who may be at risk and help develop individualized support to reduce those risks. Why is it hard to get people to save for retirement? Delay discounting. My dollar is worth more to me now than some old gross future version of me who has more wrinkles and $1.50. Dieting and exercise require foregoing rewards now for progress toward a long-term goal. Perhaps not surprisingly, studies have shown that delayed discounting can be used to predict obesity and obesity treatment success rates. Uh, what about the gig economy? Uber, delivery services like DoorDash and Instacart, Airbnb, TaskRabbit, and so on, allow people to get paid immediately rather than waiting for weeks for a paycheck. What about Amazon? Amazon is huge, but it's a mail order company. What is their biggest problem? Delay discounting. 
Why would I buy light bulbs from them and wait forever for them to arrive in the mail when I could go to a traditional store and get them right away? To overcome this problem, Amazon has gone to great lengths to change the way our economy works, change consumer behavior and consumer expectations, and they've dramatically adjusted their supply chain to make it so I can get those light bulbs fast and without having to change out of my pajamas. They're literally inventing flying robots to bring things to our houses. <laughs> now this is not without consequences to the environment, to the people who work in those industries. And all this is to say that not only does it impact our individual behavior, delay discounting, if you think about it, is at the core of many major social and economic problems that we face. Anytime outcomes are delayed, that may affect the perceived value of those outcomes. Okay, so hopefully I've convinced you of its importance. So let's talk about delay discounting functions. Basically, delay discounting functions are a way of mathematically modeling an individual's sensitivity to delay discounting. Sometimes this is called hyperbolic discounting because this function results in a hyperbolic shaped curve. That just means you get a steep drop off of value right away, but the amount discounted gets less and less as time goes on. The difference in value between right now and tomorrow is huge, but the difference between one year from now and the day after that is not so much. Now this pattern can easily be described with a simple mathematical formula. Now, if you're like me, you started to get annoyed with math once they started mixing in letters with the numbers, but the delay discounting formula is actually pretty simple, so don't let it scare you off. Let's walk through each part together and see what each part is and what the formula predicts. Because all of the pieces of the formula are variables, the actual values don't matter too much. It's the pattern that it gives you that's what's important. Okay, so we have V equals A divided by 1 plus KD. All right, let's break it down. V is going to be the subjective value or how much that reward is worth to you. When I asked what is this dollar worth, this is what I was really looking for. Not its face value, but how much is it worth to you based on your current situation. So we're gonna look at how V, the subjective value to you, changes over different amounts of delays and different reward amounts. Next up is A, which is the amount of the reward. So in my example, $1. A represents the face value. Or it could be one food pellet, one taco, one upvote, one like. Whatever the reward is, this is the objective value of the reward without factoring in anything else. Next, let's talk about the other obvious value here, D. D stands for delay. How long do you have to wait? Now, really any unit of time will do, but let's say days as an example. How might the data change if you have to wait zero days, an immediate reward, versus one day, versus two days, and so on? Finally, we get to the most mysterious letter, K. K is the discounting rate. And this is going to vary from person to person, from pigeon to pigeon, from rat to rat, from cassowary to cassowary. It's gonna be a bigger or smaller number based upon your development, your past experiences, your genetic predispositions, and your brain. It will be unique to you. K is what people are talking about when they measure impulsivity. Are you more sensitive to delays and prefer immediate rewards? Well, your K will be a larger number. Are you fine with waiting? Well, K is gonna be a smaller number. K of zero, you didn't do any discounting at all. Now there's a whole bunch of interesting questions about how you get the K that you have and whether it can be changed through some sort of intervention, but this formula is just meant to measure and describe it. So let's put some numbers in here and generate a graph. I'm gonna graph V, subjective value, using $1 across days from zero to 10 days, just for an example. For this case, let's say my K value is 0 0.1, a number I pulled completely out of my brain. You can see that today the dollar is worth $1, but by tomorrow that has dropped. It's worth $1 minus the cost of waiting, which in this case is 91 cents. Now by day 10, this has dropped to 50 cents. So the longer I wait, the lower this value is going to go. But what if my cousin Rico has a steeper delay discounting function than me? Maybe his K value is 0 
He starts at a dollar too, but by tomorrow, it's only worth 83 cents. And by 10 days, the dollar's only worth 33 cents. Rico is gonna be less motivated to wait for that dollar than I will. To determine an individual's actual value of K in real life, you would need to ask them a bunch of delay reward choices and subjective values, actual values, and delays. When you do this, what you see is that some people have a steeper discounting function, a higher value of K, than others do, which helps us understand impulsivity and self-regulation. So what do you think? What are some ways that delay discounting impacts you? If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to get more videos on all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking. Oh, and hey, I still like you even if you waited until the end of the video to subscribe. It was silly of me to worry about being attacked by a bird. That would never... Uh, oh, it's in my hair! Uh. My eyes, they go for the eyes. <laughs>